Hey, this is Blonde Guy Gamer, and welcome to Black Sheet Gamer Reviews. I know I usually like to showcase console games in my videos, but I don't mean to neglect PC games as well. It's just that it's only now in recent years I've got a computer that can actually play newer games, and most of which I just meet the minimum requirements for. But nevertheless, having a new computer finally lets me record some PC games I do have. And while I didn't grow up with a lot of PC games, there's one game I got on my 10th birthday that I still have fond memories of. Command Conquer Red Alert. This game was my introduction to the Command & Conquer games, and I eventually got the rest of the franchise. While I don't play a lot of other real-time strategy games outside of StarCraft, Command & Conquer is one of, if not, my favorite RTS series as a whole. However, there's one game that definitely stands out in the pack. Command & Conquer Renegade. What makes Renegade unique is that it's a first-slash-third-person shooter set in the Command & Conquer universe instead of being a real-time strategy game. That alone makes it a perfect contender to cover for this show. It should also be noted that this game was made by the original developers of Command & Conquer, Westwood Studios, but was their last game in the franchise before being shut down and Electronic Arts, who owned Westwood at the time, would make the Command & Conquer games from there onward. Now unlike most old school CNC fans, I'm not going to pull a sweetie one and go, and then Electronic Arts happened, like with Ultima, and start a big spiel about how EA killed off Westwood and ruined the franchise, since I actually don't mind and even enjoy most of the games EA made afterwards. Though to get an elephant in the room out of the way, I will admit Command & Conquer 4 is the weakest with what they tried to change, but I still argue it's not as bad as a game fans claim it to be. Eh, besides, I more or less just get sick and tired of hearing the same complaints over and over again. Not that having similar opinions among a fanbase are necessarily wrong, it's just that kind of bandwagon attitude towards games and companies puts me off when I have a different or not as negative opinion about something. I do try and convey my opinions in a fair manner, and try not to force opinions down anyone's throat. Just as long as people don't try and do the same to me. Hold it right there, Blondie! Yeah, holy shit, Korshak. I know you haven't been around lately, but that doesn't mean you can just come in out of nowhere. Well, tough luck, because when I got word you were reviewing Command Conquer Renegade, I had to get here immediately. Uh, why would you care that I'm reviewing this game? I doubt this game unleashes evil, or this is all a weird dream, or some shit like that. I came here because this was the last Command & Conquer game Westwood made before being driven out by the scum corporation known as Electronic Arts, before they took the franchise for their own financial gain. Oh, god damn it! Look, I already made it perfectly clear that I don't have any real beef with EA despite what they did with Westwood and the franchise afterwards. You can take your remarks that I've already heard a billion times elsewhere, I just want to review Renegade and that's it. Oh, Blondie, you've become too naive. Can't you see it? All the EA does is suck their studios dry until they're either gone or sold their souls like Bioware did? Who, by the way, is making a sequel to Generals, the full EA Command & Conquer game that started it all! It all comes full circle! Right, because making a free-to-play game made by a division of Bioware is clearly selling out. Don't patronize me! I won't rest until the game corporations like EA, Activision, and Capcom get what they deserve for their business practices! You've gotten too soft, bloody. It leaves you vulnerable being stricken down by them at any time! We need to show them what we're truly made of before that happens, and give the games back to the gamers! You know, maybe you're right. I guess I am just too polite and timid. If I actually want to make a difference, I guess I need to be more louder and outspoken if I actually want to be heard. Hey look, a game with on this DLC and an online pass! What? Where? Wow, that actually worked. Uh, so with that out of the way, Let's get into Command & Conquer Renegade. In 2002, Command & Conquer Renegade was released exclusively for the PC, though there were plans to port the game on the PlayStation 2, but the development for that was cancelled. The game takes place near the end of the first CNC game in which you play as GDI Commando Nick Havoc Parker, whose character design is an obvious homage to a certain someone from a movie called Commando, to take out opposing Nod forces. By default, the game plays as a typical first-person shooter, with the camera occasionally switching to third-person for driving vehicles and climbing ladders. Though by hitting the F key, you can freely toggle between first- and third-person view when running around, but I prefer to stay in first-person myself. As for the rest of the controls, it's what you expect for a first-person shooter on the PC, and works pretty well. The one minor thing that irked me was that you can reload your weapon regardless of whether or not it has a full clip or not. Thankfully it doesn't waste the whole clip, but just feels like something that could have easily been fixed. Nitpick aside, the rest of the aiming and shooting mechanics do the job. You also get a nice assortment of weapons at your disposal. Some are fairly conventional, like machine guns, flamethrowers, sniper rifles, rocket launchers, C4, and a pistol with unlimited ammo. Yeah, and before Left 4 Dead pistols. <laughs> 
but there are also some unique weapons for the Command & Conquer setting, such as laser and shock rifles and weapons fueled by Tiberium, the main series trademark resource mineral and plot device that just so happens to be deadly on physical contact which you can run into and take damage if you're not careful. Tiberium weapons are naturally very effective against infantry, but run the risk of mutating them into giant... Uh, slug things. Using these weapons on those and other Tiberium-based enemies won't work since it actually heals them, forcing you to be strategic with different weapon types and whether or not you want to risk mutating people or not. Then there's the Ion Cannon Beacon, which unleashes a devastating blast that annihilates everything nearby, including yourself if you aren't careful. But you don't get it very often, and I didn't really use it, save for the tutorial, since it's only really useful against stationary targets and buildings, which you can take care of relatively easy by other means. Speaking of which, while the game is a pretty conventional first-person shooter, it does incorporate some strategic elements from the traditional Command & Conquer games. For example, you can enter enemy structures to sabotage them by blowing up the main control panel. These sometimes come up as secondary objectives, and completing these usually rewards you with less enemies to deal with and giving you health and armor, ammo, or health and armor upgrades. While most of these objectives aren't hard to miss, they are still optional, and even if you fail any of them, the main mission still isn't over. Plus, you can destroy other buildings and such even if you aren't told to do so as tertiary objectives, giving some freedom in how you play. Though in the long run, completing these objectives only help to factor in the overall rank when you complete each level, and said rank system is pretty much just there for the sake of having a level complete rank system. Because of all the secondary objectives, the levels in this game are naturally pretty large and varied. These range from sprawling open areas to more enclosed building complexes, as well as parts in several levels giving you the chance to drive various GDI and non-vehicles, which are a nice addition in keeping with the familiar Command and Conquer elements. Though the same can't exactly be said for the enemy AI, as most of the time they just stand there or bum rush you in a straight line, and even then their AI will sometimes bug out. Uh, hello, you could at least aim your guns in my general direction. Remember my man, if we can't see him, he won't be able to hit us! Ah! Hey, you okay up there? You don't seem to be moving, are you stuck on the ladder somehow? Uh, ah, forget it, just die. Later on, you do encounter harder enemies, but are really more annoying than difficult, such as cloaked enemies, Tiberium soldiers that love to dip my frame rate with their Tiberium rifles, and snipers that can pretty much one-shot you out of nowhere. Oh, and you better use the quick saves, because otherwise the game only auto-saves after each completed mission, and they take a while to complete. As for the story, it's typical for Command & Conquer and even first-person shooters of this nature. Havoc is your stereotypical one-man army who prefers to work alone and tends not to follow exact orders and dive headfirst into combat. He also likes to spat off one-liners in true action hero fashion. Conflict of interest? No. <laughs> I got interest in conflict. It's one of those new subs. Impressive. Are they armed? This one is. I got a present for you. Really? I got a present for you? <laughs> I know that's what the original command unit from Command & Conquer said, but I still just can't help but laugh at that. <laughs> And I know a good place to put it, too. I got a present for you! He <laughs> uh, mm, uh, Yeah, back to Renegade. Throughout the game, there will be several characters Havoc will work with and face, such as Brigadier General Locke, who commands the DDI operation and gives Havoc orders. Then there's the Tiberium researchers Dr. Mobius, Dr. Petrova, and Mobius' daughter Sydney because every video game scientist needs their daughter involved somehow since Metal Gear. Oh, and they get kidnapped by Nod to work on mutated Tiberium super soldiers since they believe being mutated by Tiberium is the next step in human evolution or some crap like that. Then there's also the strike commando team called the Dead Six that Havoc used to work with, who each play a respective role in stereotype. You do get to fight along with them, but only in two levels, and their AI doesn't fare much better than the enemies. One thing I do want to point out is that in the second of these missions after you rescue Sydney, a nuclear strike is launched and the team needs to get to a minimum safe distance, which is just down the street. Yeah, too bad that distance wasn't enough for the soldiers in Call of Duty 4. With the Nod characters, you actually do run into the Nod leader and main series antagonist, Kane, albeit mostly through hologram rejector communicators that make him sort of look like Zordon from Power Rangers. Alpha, GDI has escaped. Recruit five soldiers with attitude. There's also the leader of the Nod Special Forces, the Black Hand, which you only see in cutscenes, and Mendoza, a brute you do fight as both himself and as a Tiberium mutant later on as boss fights. Lastly, we have Sakura, a mercenary for Nod, but has had some history with Havoc and eventually helps out. Gee, an Asian female mercenary whose true motives are always a mystery and likes to flirt with the main character. Nope, can't say I've never heard of a character like that before. Yeah, with the exception of meeting some of these characters in the tutorial, which, by the way, you get shot to show how armor and health works, most of the characters are hastily introduced seemingly out of nowhere sometimes. 
Although you can find data disks scattered around levels that, while some reveal portions of the area map, others give you information on characters and units. Besides, the story in this is still serviceable despite throwing in all these characters, and like the other CNC games, is intentionally over the top, which is made apparent right away in the cheesy intro. Though unlike previous Command and Conquer games, the cutscenes are not FMV with real life actors, but use the character models and computer generated cutscenes. It's understandable since FMV cutscenes in a game like this wouldn't really work, but this method of cutscenes I always thought looked. odd in games. It sort of reminds me of Evil Dead Hail the King's cutscenes. I mean, I know this was Westwood's first 3D game, but the character models are a bit dated. It's not as bad during gameplay, but it does reach levels of Uncanny Valley during the cutscenes. The rest of the graphics, however, is basic, but does the job for being the first 3D Command and Conquer game. Though there were a couple times when the graphics briefly glitched, but otherwise I had no major issue with how the game looked. In fact, the engine that was used for this game, the so creatively named Westwood 3D engine, would go on to be the basis for Command and Conquer Generals, Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle Earth, and Command and Conquer 3. So this game does have a rightful place for helping to bring the CNC series into full 3D. For the sound, it's okay too. But my main problem I had was that several sounds and voices can overlap each other. The sound effects are mostly just stock, which are fine, but then there's the yells enemies make when you kill them that are the exact same death cries from previous CNC games. I guess that's okay in the sense that it takes place in an older Command & Conquer game, but it seems a bit too recycled to me. Voice work, when it's not being overlapped, is of the usual Command & Conquer quality, complete with Kane's actor Joseph D. Cookin providing the voice for him. But then there's instances like this. Do you think we can fix it without moving the other containers? There's no way. They've all gotta go. What kind of damage are we looking at if we leave it until port? Assuming all containers get unloaded, the damage should be minimal. The cleanup is still gonna be a major pain. Just leave it for now, but keep an eye on it. If these containers breach, we're going to be up to our necks in trouble. Shouldn't we at least try to mop it up? Sure, knock your socks off. Just be careful of direct exposure. Yeah, this really confused me at first, because it's the same voice with no differentiating tones doing a conversation with two people. Even I did a better job at that in my Fistful of Boomstick review. Lastly, there's the one and only sound Havoc makes when he gets hurt, which sounds like he's annoyed a vending machine ran out of his favorite candy bar more than getting shot. <laughs> Now, any fan of Command & Conquer will tell you that the music is one of the best aspects of the series, and this game is no exception. Franchise veteran composer Frank Klopacki brings a rocking soundtrack that fits with both the Command & Conquer setting and the fast-paced shooting aspects. So if you like the classic CNC music, you'll enjoy this soundtrack too. With all that said, did I enjoy the game overall? Uh, yeah, I did. Despite a few hiccups here and there, I found it an enjoyable conventional first-person shooter and a fun twist on the Command & Conquer games. It's just a shame this little experiment didn't quite work out for Westwood since there were plans to make a sequel set around the Red Alert universe, but never came to be. That should come to no surprise though since the game does feel a little bit haphazard and rushed. Hell, the game failed to ship on the anticipated shipping date that did result in a funny parody video Westwood made of Havoc going through Westwood Studios to ensure that they won't miss the next shipping date. Which happened anyway. Plus, this game didn't quite make the sales and critical reception Westwood and EA were hoping, which inevitably led to Westwood's closure. Finally, there was an FPS RTS hybrid simply called Tiberium in the works, but was cancelled in 2008 when EA felt it didn't meet the standards of games they were trying to go for. So because of that, it's most likely that Renegade will be the only first-person Command & Conquer game. But at least it's still solid on its own and worth checking out if you're a CNC fan or even if you just like first-person shooters. It's available in all the Command & Conquer collections, which is where I got my copy in the first collection, so it's by no means an unwelcome addition to the series despite being different. Hmm, is that really it? I could have sworn there was something else. Uh... Ah, maybe it'll just come to me when I least expect it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's not coming to me. I need to look this up. Uh, here we go. Uh, oh, duh! Multiplayer! Why didn't I just look this up in the first place?
Multiplayer in this game combines both Team Deathmatch and Command and Conquer elements. You have resources mined from Tiberium that are used to purchase units and characters to play as, as well as vehicles. Destroying key buildings also affect base defenses and resources, and if an ion cannon or nuclear launch beacon is placed in one of the bases before the match time runs out, the GDI and Nod teams respectively win right away. It's an interesting and fairly unique take on multiplayer in this genre. Of course, playing the practice mode with only a few brain-dead AI characters gets boring after a while, so you'd be off to play with other people online. But since the game is over 10 years old and Westwood is no longer around, the original servers aren't up anymore. However, XWIS took the servers and the community of Command & Conquer Renegade took it upon themselves to keep the game online. They even went as far as to create a fan-made patch that is still being updated called Tiberium Technologies, which added more content and fixed several issues the multiplayer had at the start. Because of that, people to this day still play Renegade Online, and I was even able to log in and join in on the fun too. Though for whatever reason, I couldn't join the more populated server at the time since it said I didn't have a correct file or something, and I couldn't play it because it detected that as cheating, I think, somehow? Eh, regardless, I'm still amazed that it's still possible to play with people online in this. Games like Castlevania Judgment would have never dreamed of having people online after 10 years, let alone over a month. Not only that, but since there were no expansions for Renegade, Westwood released a software development kit for people to create user content, which resulted in an extensive mod community. These mods include Command and Conquer, Reborn, and Red Alert, A Path Beyond. And while the official sequel was cancelled, a fan-made sequel on the Unreal Tournament 3 engine called Renegade X was made. While I haven't played any of these yet since I wanted to focus on the main game for this review, the fact that this much community involvement was made still astounds me. Command and Conquer Renegade is certainly one game that won't be forgotten thanks to its devoted fanbase. Ah, <sighs> there. Now I covered everything I wanted to talk about. <laughs> Good thing I remembered multiplayer. Hate to forget to tie up any loose ends. <laughs> oh crap, of course I had to say that. That was a dirty trick, Blondie! You're just like EA and Brush, you us would aside for your own selfish needs! I won't have any of that! <sighs> Look, I'm sorry, okay? I just wanted to focus on the game itself and not cause a huge debate on EA and game corporations. I'm just not one to cause a fuss. But I still acknowledge the complaints you and other people make. It's just that I feel like if you want to be respected for your opinions, you need to be respectful back. That's just how I am. I still think you're too soft, bloody. But if that's the way you want to do it, fine. I'll just keep doing things my own way, too. Yeah, fair enough. I'm glad we at least reached an understanding. I suppose. But I did also come back with the next game you'll be reviewing that I'm sure will bring your blood to a boil and release your inner fanboy against the developers. Oh, and what game would that be? This. Oh, Earthworm Jim 3D? Eh, I've played worse. Oh, Blondie! What? Command and Conquer 